If you want an Android TV streamer that's maybe a, looks a little different from the rest, but is pretty powerful in and of itself, then the NVIDIA Shield TV, the cylindrical one, might be the ticket for you. I take a look at that on All About Android, and that's up next. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Tech is brought to you by Epson's EcoTank Printers. This holiday season, kiss expensive cartridges goodbye. Check out epson.com slash ecotankleo to learn more. Last week on the show, Ron, you showed off the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. You had just gotten it. You'd spent a week with that, and we yeah. talked a lot about that. Um at the same time that NVIDIA released the Shield TV Pro, they also released a NVIDIA Shield TV, the 2019 edition of this. This is actually $50 less than the Pro. This is an, and a little bit smaller and a little bit more limited. So this costs $149.99. And I just got this a couple of days ago. I've been using it for a couple of days just to kind of watch some content on you know, on Android TV and everything and to test it out. I have the original NVIDIA Shield TV at home. Uh, and uh, so far, this is this is actually a really compelling little piece of gear. It's It's got the same NVIDIA Tegra 1X Plus um, inside as, as the Pro model. So from a processor perspective, it's the same. It's got 2 gigs of RAM instead of the 3 gigs in the Pro. It's got eight, 8 gigs of storage instead of the 16 gigs of storage on the Pro. Um, another difference, of course, is the, the form factor is obviously really different, right? Like it's this, this cylindrical approach. Uh, I like it though. I mean, like when you look at, when you look at the diagram of how it can go, it's meant to be like a pass through. Yes. That's exactly right? what which it's is, meant to is, be. Which is really interesting, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So power down here. There's your Ethernet port uh, to, to wire into the internet. Flip it over on the other side and you've got your HDMI port. Um, that's a, like a little like reset slash remote finder button. Uh, underneath the HDMI port is a single micro SD card slot. So basically the IO that you get here is micro SD. If you want to add storage or whatever, there is no USB. Um, the Pro has two full-size USB 3.0 ports. This does not. This has a single micro SD card slot. So that might limit you. Um, it might also be exactly what you need. Like maybe that's just all you need. You know, uh, Android 9 Pi, same as the Pro, same support for uh, the different codecs, Dolby Vision, HDR10, not HDR10+. Plus. Uh, it does support Dolby Atmos, Dolby Digital Plus surround sound. It does also have the AI enhanced video upscaling uh, to 4K from 720p and 1080p. Although I've noticed in my playing around with that feature, as, as uh, interesting as it is, there's a requirement on frames per second. I think it's 30 frames per second. If your content doesn't have 30 frames per second, it won't activate that mode. So that's a little, a little specific. So you kind of have to know that you're feeding it the right, exactly the right kind of uh, content in order to uh, benefit from the neural networks that are upscaling in real time. Um, but it is neat and uh, and very effective when it's when it's working properly. It does include the same uh, revised remote, the triangular kind of remote that stands up pretty nicely and uh, has the same layout. It's a really good upgrade from the remote on the previous version of the it's a good remote, right? TV. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah. So I'd say the downsides of this. So what do you not get if you're getting the regular and not the pro version? This will not for this will not play uh, HDR content from YouTube, so it's not going to play it in HDR anyways. So that's something to to keep in mind. It's missing the VP9 profile, from what I understand. That's not going to be included. Uh, so you know, I, I and I didn't do any reading to see if that's missing from the Pro as well. But I know it is here. It also can't be used as a Plex server, and that's going to. And by the way, Plex is a sponsor on the network. Uh, full disclosure, but um, a lot of people get the NVIDIA Shield TV because they want to use it as a Plex server or part of their Plex media, and because it doesn't have that I/O. It's not capable of that. So if you want to use an NVIDIA Shield TV as a Plex server, you have to get the Pro version, not this one. So keep that in mind. And also, and this is kind of a bummer, it can only run 32-bit apps. So it's not capable of running 64-bit apps, which is kind of becoming a standard 
on Android. So I think it's kind of strange that they left it out of here, especially considering the Pro can and they're both using the same processor. It doesn't make much sense to me why they would place that limitation on it. If you're using an NVIDIA Shield TV for emulation, this could crop up for you. It's a great emulation device, the original one and the Pro that just came out. But um, a lot, there are a decent amount of emulators now that are 64-bit emulators, like the Dolphin emulator, for example, which is a GameCube emulator. And uh, if you want to run that, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to do that on this version. Uh, only 32-bit apps can be run at this time. So, some limitations. How is how is that even possible? How is what possible? The 32-bit uh, only apps because the CPU is the same. Android works the same. 64 bits. I mean, how is that possible? It's a really great question. I I was really baffled to find that. Uh, to find that out, um, how, it's been reported in multiple out? places, and you know, I and and to be honest, like I got this just a couple of days ago, I haven't been able to test it myself, so I'm going off off of what I've read in like is, an Nvidia support forum that mentioned. Is that like it. a is that like a power management issue? Maybe. God, I I have no idea. Oh. It really doesn't make much sense to me. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It was it was kind of boggling to me. It was like, wait a minute, why that makes okay. Yeah, Makes but no that doesn't sense. make any sense because the, the CPU is the same. Yeah, support sixty four, sixty four bit. Yeah. Maybe it's a bug on their side. Uh, maybe I mean this was from an Nvidia support article uh, on the Nvidia site. Uh, I don't have a link to you right now. I'll have to take a look for that. But but yeah, um, I don't know. I, I would love for someone to right, so to I, clarify. I found a Reddit. I found a Reddit thread. That says to anyone who's confused about this, uh, seems to be running apps in 32-bit only. Um, there's some cursing in here, so I'm not going to share what it is. <laughs> um, yeah. Confirmation. So um, here's a shield thread. I think it's the same thing that you found, Jason, yeah. the forum uh, on Nvidia.com that says, yeah, that that uh, 32-bit. Yeah. So Doesn't weird. say why though. That's so weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, and and like a part of me wants to believe that at some point there will be an update, or maybe it's an oversight, or whatever. This thing's been out for a, enough time now that I feel like Nvidia would have, um, I don't know, mentioned that if that I, was going to happen. This is what I, I love about Reddit. Like in the comments, they're like saying it's like maybe it's because of the RAM or blah blah blah, and you know, and and you know, and and you know, the the lack of Dolby Vision or whatever. But then then another commenter goes, the new remote is a huge improvement though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, funny. yeah. But, but this, the CPU supports that instruction set. I mean, it looks like a bug to me. Somehow. I hope it's a bug because then it could be fixed and then it could could uh, could support the 64-bit apps like it should. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, I'm baffled. Yeah, I'm baffled yeah. too. I'm happy you agree because <laughs> I didn't believe it at first. Um, but anyway, so that's the NVIDIA Shield TV. Uh, if you want to save 50 bucks off the Pro, you can get this. Maybe this is enough no, for you. Uh, keep in mind those asterisks, and uh, that might be worth an extra 50 bucks. I think you just get more expandability, you get more power, you know, capability, obviously 64-bit versus 32. Uh, that, could, uh, that could come around and bite you uh, with this model versus the more expensive one. No matter what, it's money well spent if you get the Pro. This is this is probably a pretty, you know, pretty good device as well uh in in use for a lot of people, but uh it definitely has some limitations. So worth considering. And a neat little form factor as well. I, I like the form factor. I think that's really interesting. I, I don't know. I think I like the pastor idea. Just put it behind your TV, don't notice it. That's cool. This episode of Hands On Tech is brought to you by Epson. This holiday season, kiss expensive ink cartridges goodbye. The Epson EcoTank printer comes with a ridiculous amount of ink in the box so you can print thousands of pages. It has supersized, easy to fill ink tanks, which means you will never hassle with buying or changing ink cartridges again. So when you're thinking about the perfect holiday gift, add the EcoTank printer to your holiday shopping list so you can just fill and chill. Check out EcoTank printers at Best Buy, Staples, or at Epson.com slash EcoTankLeo. 
Keep up with all the hottest tech news and gadgets. Visit twit.tv. There you'll be able to find and subscribe to all our tech shows. Thanks for watching Hands on Tech.